And welcome to Data Communications Brokers Videotape on RS-232 and the use of the PBOB, or Pocket Breakout Box. The PBOB is used in RS-232C cables. The lights, or LEDs, indicate which signals are active. This in itself can solve many mysterious datacom problems. See how the send and receive data LEDs flash to indicate data activity. But suppose you use this and discover the cable is wired incorrectly for a new application. The PBOB is designed to provide the added capability of rewiring RS-232C cables. On the back side of the PBOB are 24 jumpers for positions 2 through 25. Pin 1 frame ground is always connected through. The jumpers act like switches. When they're in place, the circuit is closed and continuous from connector to connector. Suppose you want to cross over pin 2, send data, to pin 3, receive data. Just pull out the jumpers for pins 2 and 3. You can even store the jumpers temporarily by setting them on one of the two legs or pins. Now turn the PBOB over to the side with the LEDs and the sockets. Jumper 2 to 3 and 3 to 2. It couldn't be easier. And note the sockets for the jumper wire. If you misplace your jumper wire, even a paper clip will do. Obviously, there are no dangerous voltages here. The LEDs display positive voltages for pins 15, 17, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 20. There is a spare LED position, too. The spare position shows yellow for negative and red for positive voltage signals. To use the spare, jumper from some source pin over to either of these two spare position sockets. The two spare sockets are tied together in common, so you can use a second jumper wire to continue to a destination socket. When all of the jumpers are in place on the back side, voltages from either side will light the LEDs. Be careful not to put these jumpers in backwards. The rounded end fits down over the pins. The split end is on top. The split end also has the three letters A, P, T. In order to use the pocket breakout box, it's helpful to know the basic aspects of RS-232C. First of all, terminals, including computer ports, are called DTE for data terminal equipment. Modems and multiplexers are called DCE for data communications equipment. The DTE, or terminal connector, is supposed to be a male, or pin-style connector, but is just as often a female, or socket connector. The DCE, or communications equipment connector, is supposed to be a female connector, and usually is. Most RS-232C connections use far less than the full 25 positions. In fact, most installations use between 8 and 12 wires, and can use as few as 3. In the most simple use, just three wires, send data, receive data, and signal ground are used. There are only four categories of RS-232C circuits. There are grounds, data, control, and timing circuits. The two grounds are pin 1, frame ground, which is not often used, and pin 7, signal ground, which is always required. The two data leads are pin 2, send data, and pin 3, receive data. The point of reference is the terminal. Data is sent from the terminal to the modem on pin 2. Data is received by the terminal from the modem on pin 3. Control leads are either from the terminal or DTE or from the communications equipment. DTE control signals are pins 4, request to send, and pin 20, data terminal ready. Modems present terminals with several control leads. Clear to send on pin 5 is sent by the modem in response to request to send. Pin 6, data set ready, indicates the modem is turned on and ready to communicate. 
Pin 8 from the modem is data carrier detect. Pin 22 is ring indicator, which turns on when a dial-up modem senses a ring from an incoming call. All of the control leads are positive when they're on. When on, they cause the PBOB red LEDs to light. When off, the PBOB's yellow spare LED will light if you jumper over to it. The timing leads from the modem are on pins 15 for the transmit data clock and 17 for the receive data clock. These signals will cause the spare red and yellow LEDs to light. Voltage levels are constantly switching between positive and negative. The timing leads are used for synchronous data transmission only. Most RS-232C devices use about 12 volts positive for a binary zero, called a space, or a control signal meaning of on. RS-232C devices use about 12 volts negative for a binary one, called mark, or a control signal meaning of off. The balance of the RS-232C pins are mostly secondary signals seldom used in datacom applications. Now that we've been through a brief review of RS-232C, we'll use the PBOB to create a null modem cable between two data terminals, or DTEs. It's common to wire a null modem cable as follows. Cross over 2 to 3, 3 to 2. Then on each connector side, tie 5, 6, 8, and 20 together. Terminals often expect to see clear to send, data set ready, and data carrier detect on. Pin 20, data terminal ready, is usually on as long as the terminal is powered. Be sure to remove the jumpers on the rear of the PBOB for these six pins. Plug this in and we should have terminal talking to terminal, provided both are set to the proper speeds. The PBOB can be used between a terminal and a dial-up modem. A dial modem won't answer the phone without pin 20, data terminal ready, turned on. If our cable is missing pin 20, we see no LED on the PBOB. A positive voltage for a modem's pin 20 can come from one of several places, such as pin 4, request to send, on the terminal, or the positive test voltage found on many modems on pin 9. We can jumper from 9 to the test LED to see if there's a test voltage. There is, so we jumper 9 to 20 on the PBOB. Another use of the PBOB is to jumper printer busy leads to match what computers or terminals need. Many printers use pins 11 or 19 for a busy signal. The printer may be attached to equipment looking for busy on a different pin. For example, we may wish to jumper busy on pin 11 to the terminal busy input on pin 20. Another common use of the PBOB is to perform a loopback. In the most simple case, just jumper 2 to 3. Note that the jumpers on the back of the PBOB for 2 and 3 are next to each other. They can be turned 90 degrees to do the jumpering entirely on the back without the need for jumper wires in the sockets on the front. We've demonstrated half a dozen uses for our pocket breakout box. Your circumstances and your needs will dictate others as you continue working in data communications. We're confident that your PBOB will quickly become a trusted and constant troubleshooting companion.